Hello, and welcome to Look Smarter Than You Are with OBIEE. This is the second part in the series on importing ASOS-based databases into the repository. Now, our measures dimension is here. And S-based people know measures. Hey, that's where I keep my, my numeric data, right? Everything else in here, area code, geography, income level, products, promotion, square footage, all of that really just describes, it's the metadata that describes my measures. Well, OB handles things a little bit differently. So it takes the dimension that you tag with that accounts tag, and it generates this one column down here where all your numeric data is basically aggregated. And when you build a report, you bring this one column in, and then you use all these other members to, again, describe it. And that's how you build a report. That's how OB gets its super fast response times. Now, a lot of people don't like that. They, they oh, this single column, it's, I don't like it. So, again, you can simply come up to the database, right-click, and you can choose to flatten your measures. Now, one word of caution, this is fine if you have a very few amount of measures. If you have thousands of measures, you do not want to flatten them. OB will also generate an error for anything over 200 members. So again, if you have a lot of calculations, people say, well, I need to do calculations. I can't do that with everything in one column. The place to do your calculations, in my opinion, is S-Base. OB can do some calculations. It's not that it can't. It's just, why would you not want to take advantage of the best calculation engine right there at your fingertips? So that would be my suggestion to you is as much as possible, calculate in S-Base, report in OB. Use the right tool for the job. Life will be a lot easier. So, all right, hopefully, uh, let me see. You're still with me. I didn't confuse you there. But again, all your numeric data is sitting right here now in one column. And let's pretend for just a moment that our measures dimension, which really isn't that deep here, it only goes down oh, about three generations apparently. And notice how I see Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3. That's how it looks in S-Base. Um, a little bit of a difference here. I do have my ancestor references showing here in my lower generations. So that, again, just lets me know. That helps OB find the ancestors. Without that, it would not be able to find it. The member key, of course, is for the generation. And again, the mem nor column is how the sort comes from S space. So it will sort in outline order that way. So that's kind of what everything looks like right now. I'm going to right click the database and talk about some of the options that we might not do that, that we might do there. So I'm going to go ahead and go down to properties. And what I like to focus on, again, display columns. Those of you that have seen some of my other videos know that that's what I'm all about. What, what are my users going to see? I'm all about trying to make their experience as easy and intuitive as possible. So normally I would click alias and be done with it because in my opinion, member names just are not all that meaningful to people. But what I have found working with various customers is that their aliases change quite frequently. So by turning this option on, their reports could technically break because what happens is a user will pick my Gen 2 measure, let's say, and they'll by default get the alias instead of having to go and actually physically pick the alias name. So this alias option here works great if your aliases are fairly static. If they're not, you probably want to check member names and not aliases. However, the other thing I would say to you is that if you do check this member names option, and then we're going to go create aliases in just a moment, you want to make sure that all your members in the outline have aliases. If not, you could encounter some null value suddenly popping up in your alias table, which can confuse your users as well. So I'm going to go ahead right now and say, well, we'll leave this at member names. So by default, if a user picks Gen 2, Gen 3, Gen 4 to build a report, which hopefully we'll rename those so they don't even see the words gen. If they do that, they'll get the member names. They would actually have to pick the alias column that we're going to create in just a moment in order to get the alias values. I'm going to uncheck cacheable because in my opinion, a space is super duper in more ways than one. And 
the fact that it's already aggregated makes life much easier in the OB world because OB loves to work with aggregated data. So I don't need to cache this right now. I think my performance is going to be stellar. All right, so I've got that set, but I didn't turn my aliases on. And you don't see, I don't have any alias columns showing. So let me go ahead, right click the database again, and I'm going to create alias columns right now. So it's create columns for alias tables. I'm going to select that option. And you'll see that I have two choices here. One is member name. So that's in case where I just was in properties for the database and I turned on the alias and I selected the default table there. I could come here and create separate member name columns. So again, the member names can be used to create the reports, but the aliases show in the reports. So it sounds confusing, but I can show both in OB. I can have the member name and the alias if that's what I want. But right now, I want to create alias columns using the default option. So I'm going to select that, click on Create. And you will see when I open up my generations now that I have some alias names. So let's go back to measures because that's where we were before and take a look. So now you can see I have a gen one measures dash default column. So yeah, and if I opened up products, you would see the same thing. Every column, multiple hierarchies here, every hierarchy now has that member alias there. Okay, so it has that default. So multiple hierarchies and products, hmm, I think I'm going to convert that for sure to one hierarchy. So again, I'm right clicking on the products member and I'm going to convert to single hierarchy view. So that way, no matter which product I want in a report, I don't have to worry that at some time I'm going to have issues trying to pick between hierarchies, two different hierarchies, same dimension, OB will throw an error. So this way, I can pick any product I want, and OB will be happy. Now, if we talk about financial cubes for just a minute, they're one of my favorite topics because I do a lot of work with financial cubes in OB. And generally speaking, the measures are, of course, my chart of accounts, where I have thousands upon thousands of members, and I have very deep dimensions going down possibly to generation 19 or even 20 sometimes. How do I know where an account is when I'm trying to create a report? I have no idea. I don't know what generation that's in. And I don't want to have to open every single generation when I'm trying to build a report and figure it out. So what I can do is I can basically come to the hierarchy for, let's say, the accounts dimension. Any dimension this will work on, I'm simply going to right click on the hierarchy. And I'm going to go down to the properties for the hierarchy. Yes, every hierarchy has a type assigned. So by default, OBI assumes that SBase is unbalanced. So I'm going to click here and take a look at my hierarchy types. And I'll see that there's a fully balanced option, which is for that perfect cube that is just wonderful, right? It's very symmetrical, just absolutely perfect. Every member has children, so that kind of thing. That almost never happens in the real world. So unbalanced is the default. And unbalanced is I'm skipping generations. So I might go from my dimension header down to a city. For some reason, there are no states for these cities. So I'm skipping a generation. That's what unbalanced means. Ragged balanced is that there are children missing. So some of the parents have children and some have no children. And then, of course, value-based is parent child. And that's what I'm going to set my measures to here. So you can see that way I don't have to know what generation that my measures are in. And if you'll notice, I had three generations before. So it takes kind of the that last generation name and assigns it. And now my users don't have to know any longer where something is located. They'll just see the parent measures and all the children listed below. Parents, children, they're all going to be in one list from an outline perspective now. Thanks for watching and look for additional parts in this series on importing ASO databases. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.